Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a mono green werewolves deck, which might seem a little strange that we're not playing any red cards, but they weren't always pulling their weight. It forced us to play a lot of tap lands in order to cast both double red and double green cards, which made our deck a bit slower and we're trying to be aggressive here. So by playing mono green we can play a mana base with only forests, which allows us to curve out nicely and it also allows us to play with Primal Bellow, which is a very powerful in a mono green deck, since we get plus one plus one for each forest we control, which can often be more than a giant growth in this deck. So that's the idea behind the deck, so we're trying to be an aggressive deck with lots of werewolves and werewolf synergies. So let's get started here with a new addition from Eldritch Moon in Cassic Prowler, single green for a 2-1 werewolf horror, and for 5 mana we can transform it at instant speed into Sinuous Predator, which is a 4-4 that can't be blocked by more than one creature. So pretty nice 1-drop for the deck. Then we have a Neglected Heirloom, 1 copy, an equipment for 1 generic mana, 1 generic mana to equip, gives the creature plus 1 plus 1, and when the equipped creature transforms we also get to transform the Neglected Heirloom, and it becomes Ashmouth Blade, giving the creature plus 3 plus 3 and first strike, and of course still remains equipped to the original creature, but we can also move the Ashmouth Blade for 3 generic mana. So pretty powerful equipment. We already went over Primal Bellow. Then we have two copies of Prey Upon, which is a nice a cheap removal spell for a mono green deck. Goes nicely with our large werewolves and our pump spells. Next up we have two copies of Lupine Prototype, which is a pretty weird new card from Eldritch Moon. For two generic mana we get a Wolf Construct artifact creature. That's a 5-5, which seems pretty awesome. But there's a pretty big drawback here since the prototype can't attack or block unless a player has no cards in hand. So realistically the Lupine prototype will not be able to attack or block in our deck until turn 4 or turn 5 when we empty our hand. But once we do empty our hand it's a pretty big creature that's already in play that can attack for 5 or more damage according to how many anthem effects we have in play. Of course it's a wolf so has all the wolf synergies. It's a pretty big creature that we can use with our fight cards like Prey Upon to take out the opposing creatures and 5 toughness means that it can survive sweepers like Languish which will otherwise be pretty devastating for this kind of deck. Then we have Duskwatch Recruiter, we all know and love him, can provide us some card advantage with the activated ability, then has the typical werewolf mechanic and transforms into Krellen Horde Howler, which makes our creatures cheaper. And next up we have Lampold Pacifist, which is also a typical werewolf, 2 mana for a 3-3, but she can't attack unless we control a creature with power 4 or greater. There's a few ways to get a creature with power 4 or greater. One is to simply cast one, the other is to equip the Lampold Pacifist with uh, for example the Neglected Heirloom, that way she's a 4-4 and we meet the uh, criteria here. And another way is to maybe have an Anthem effect in play, giving our creatures plus one plus one. And we can also simply transform the Lampold Pacifist into the Lampold Butcher, which is a 4-4, so that's also pretty big. We also have Hinterland Logger, this one is probably the weakest 2-drop werewolf. It's a 2-mana two 2-1 two that transforms into a 4-2 with Trample, which does still combine nicely with our pump spells. Then we have a pump spell in a lead by example, 2 mana for an instant, that allows us to support 2, so we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of up to 2 target creatures. So we can't put 2 counters on 1 creature, but we can put 1 counter on 2 creatures. So it has also some neat synergies that we'll get to in a second. We have a Rabbit Bite to go with the two Prey Upons as additional removal. This one has the advantage of not dealing any damage to our creatures. Then we have Silver Fur Partisan, which is very exciting in this style of deck with lots of pump spells, since it's a 3 mana 2 2 with Trample, and whenever a wolf or werewolf we control becomes the target of an instant or sorcery, we get a 2 2 wolf token in play. 
So if the opponent uses spot removal on one of our creatures, we get a 2-2 token. But also if we use a pump spell on one of our creatures, we get a 2-2 token. And some of our pump spells actually target multiple creatures. For example, a lead by example targets two of our creatures if we have two of them in play. So that way we get two wolf tokens. Also our removal spells like prey upon and like... Uh, rabbit bite over here also target our creatures so they also give us a 2-2 token so there's lots of ways in this deck to generate tokens with a partisan making him pretty powerful next up we have another new addition in spirit of the hunt three mana for a 3-3 with flash so we can play it at instant speed and then when the spirit of the hunt enters the battlefield then each other creature we control, that's a wolf or werewolf, so all our creatures basically, get plus O plus 3 until end of turn. So another nice way to save them in combat or from a sweeper effect. Then we have Howlpack Resurgence, one of the big payoff cards in this deck, since it's a 3 mana enchantment with flash, so we can play it at instant speed, which goes nicely with our werewolf mechanic. And each creature we control that's a wolf or werewolf gets plus one plus one and has a trample, which is a pretty big deal when you're playing with lots of pump spells and have big creatures. Then we have Anissa Voice of Zendikar, which can make some plant tokens, but more importantly can put plus one plus one counters on our creatures. And then we have Pack Guardian as another flash wolf. That can make a wolf token if we discard land. And then finally one copy of Nissa's Judgment as an additional both pump spell with support 2 and removal spell in that we get to fight opposing creatures in a way. So also goes nicely with the Silver Fur Partisan. And then our mana base, a very simple 23 forests to go with the Primal Bellow. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which is not super exciting. We only have one 2-drop here in the early game, no 3-drops. So I think we can do better. Hmm. Only has one land, but lots of 2-drops. I think we can still do better. Alright, I'll take it. This one has a slightly better curve than our first hand. It's got one fewer land, but we get a 3-drop instead of a 4-drop. So I think I'm pretty happy with this one. Opponent on a Lumbering Falls. And we're just going to play a Logger here. And hope our opponent doesn't have a 2-drop they play, so that our Werewolf transforms. But even if they don't, we can simply play a land next turn and say go. Then our werewolf transforms and we can still play the spirit of the hunt in the opponent's turn. So the opponent forced to play the telling time here in their main phase so that our werewolf doesn't flip. But we're still gonna get to hit for two damage here. All right, we kind of do wanna stop drawing lands, but even if we draw a few more lands, I guess our primal bellow gets better. So hit for two, say go, and then probably play the spirit end of turn. All right, opponent also has a black mana in their deck with a hissing quagmire. And they do play a Jace Vrin's Prodigy. And we're just gonna play the spirit here. All right, so we get to attack for a healthy amount here. Make sure to play our forest before attacking so that our primal bellow is better. And Halpack Resurgence is an excellent draw. So I think I'll... let's see. If we play Halpack Resurgence, we are attacking for 9. Plus 4 is 13. Put the opponent down to 5. So I think I want to save the primal bellow. Maybe also in case our opponent has a sweeper effect, it can save one of our creatures. But I'm definitely going to play the Halpack Resurgence here. Also, if we play both spells, then our Flip Werewolf here will transform back, which we don't really want to have happen. So opponent's going to probably just take it here. And then we flash in our Halpack Resurgence. And they take 9 down to 9. 
and we have Primal Bellow up in case our opponent wants to cast a Sweeper, like Languish. They activate Jace. Let's see if they have any Madness cards, perhaps. Nope, they discard a Limvala. Alright, so that's a white card, so they must be playing at least four colors. And this kind of mono green aggro deck can really punish slow starts. And in fact, if her opponent doesn't have removal, they're already dead on board. So they're going to need something pretty good here. Telling time is not going to do it. So that's the first spell they're casting this turn. So they need a second one to flip back the Timber Shredder here. I guess if they do find one, they're not technically dead on board. But uh, Primal Bellow is going to make sure of it. So there's another land into Olivia's Dragoon, which is just a 2-2 for us at the moment. So our Shredder will transform back, but still has Trample thanks to the Halpak Resurgence. And another Halpak Resurgence is also a pretty awesome draw. So just attack with both. And can just play out the other Halpak. And use our pump spell. Doesn't really matter here since our opponent is tapped out. And both of our creatures have Trample. So it doesn't matter if our opponent blocks or not. Alright, sweet. So pretty quick win here against a slow star from the opponent. But I guess they still played some spells there. So on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at a easy mulligan. Uh, this one's not great, but I'll keep it. We've got a 2-drop into a bunch of 3-drops. Hopefully the recruiter survives. And I guess hopefully he transforms if her opponent doesn't have a turn 2 play. And another forest, not really what we need here. So does Squash Recruiter say go? Alright, black whites. Our opponent could be holding something like a Blessed Alliance, uh, which could force us to sacrifice an attacking creature. But I don't think we really have a choice here. So I'm just going to attack with the werewolf here, and if our opponent has it, so be it. Alright, appears they don't have it, so they go to 17, and no need to play the spirit here since it has flash. We can play it end of turn. And Oath of Liliana is interesting, so we can flash in the spirit and sacrifice a spirit instead of our Duskwash Recruiter, which might actually be fine. So let's flash in the spirit and sacrifice it instead of the Howler, since I think we might get more value from the Howler, making our creatures cheaper, or if it transforms back, we might be able to draw into some more creatures. Alright, perfect. So now we get to play Hinterland Logger. And still keep up both the Spirit of the Hunt and Primal Bellow. And since we only played one spell here in our turn, the Howler will not transform back. And if the opponent has something like a Languish, we still have some ways to pump our creatures to try and save them. Instead, our opponent has a Tooth Collector, trying to target our Hinterland Logger, giving it minus one, minus one. But we're going to play the Spirit of the Hunt to save our Logger here. So that worked out nicely. And now we get to untap another forest. All right, so Primal Bellow plus five, plus five right now. And I think we just attack with everyone. And let's see, opponent takes 5, 10. I don't think we use a Primal Bellow yet. Since we have plenty of mana to work with. And we might be able to use it to save our creatures from a sweeper. 
which is more important than getting in for five additional damage here since we're not a burn deck. Opponent makes a trade, which is fine. I'm not going to use a Primal Bellow to save the Howler here since next turn it can give plus six plus six, which might be enough to kill our opponent. So hopefully they don't have a Planar Outburst here because we can't save our creatures from that with a Primal Bellow. If it's something like an Open Nixilus killing one of our creatures, then we just win next turn. Instead, it's a Pious Evangel. All right, not a card you see very often. So they already gain one life here. But our logger stays transformed. Another land is not exactly what we need. So I think we just attack with both. I mean, our opponent might still have something like a Blast Alliance, but they didn't have it turn two. Now the question is, if our opponent blocks here, do we use the pump spell? And I think we do, since that saves our creatures and gets in for a, a lot of damage since it has Trample. And uh, that way, if our opponent does have Blast Alliance, we just sacrifice the other attacking creature. So I think that's fine. There are some other removal spells our opponent could have, like a Gideon's Reproach, which would punish us for using the pump spell here. But we'll find out. Yep, it is a Blessed Alliance, so we will sacrifice the Spirit of the Hunt here, I believe. Since the Trample is pretty relevant. This might seem strange to our opponent, but they are going to block and we'll use Primal Bellow. So 10-8, opponent drops down to 2. But unfortunately, if they have a removal spell for the Shredder, we don't have much going on. So let's hope they do not. We could have also sacrificed the Shredder, and then if our opponent didn't block or 3-3, we still didn't quite have enough. Let's see how this works out. Opponent with a Kindly Stranger, so yet another Delirium creature, but only two card types in a graveyard. And a lead by example is pretty nice here, so if our opponent goes to block, we can lead, giving our Shredder one counter, so it survives combat and tramples over for two. So unless they have another Blast Alliance, we win. And since they already had to draw into this one, I think they don't have another one. But I guess we'll find out. Opponent blocks. And yeah, let's lead and hope for the best. All right, sweet. They don't have another Bless Alliance. So there we go. On to the next one. All right, let's take a look at our opener, which with two one drops is pretty exciting. So let's keep it and hope our opponent doesn't have many sweepers. So turn one Kassik Prowler, turn two Logger. Maybe turn three Nissa. That's a pretty good curve. Opponent on Mountain. Hopefully they don't have a one mana removal spell here. But I guess we'll find out. Play our land before combat for Primal Bellow. Attack for two. And I guess if they do have a removal spell, we can Primal Bellow plus play another Prowler. But it doesn't look like they have one or want to use it. So I think we just go with a Logger over Prowler plus Keep Up Bellow. Since if the Logger transforms, that's a higher upside. And I'm sure we can find a spot in our curve to play the second Prowler. All right. Second Mountain, Twin Bolt, that's the worst case scenario, of course. Killing both of our creatures with one spell. But uh, yeah, Twin Bolt had fallen out of favor recently, so not a card you see a whole lot anymore. But our opponent did have it. So we did not find a land for Nyssa, so we have to play Prowler and say go. So off to a shaky start, unfortunately. But if we find a land for Nyssa, we 
could recover since we have a removal spell to protect her as well. Third mountain from the opponent. Into Chandra. Alright, that's fine. We can Rabbit Bite to deal with her. So let's just do that right now. And attack for two. So we still haven't found a land since our two lands in our opener. Alright, opponent also playing black with the swamp here. And they have a Nantuko husk. Alright, so this indicates that they're playing maybe a steal and sacrifice deck with act of treason effects. That they can then sacrifice our creatures after they steal them. Land is good. So I think we just attack since I'm fine trading. And then we can resolve Nissa. Opponent takes it. And I'm just gonna make a plant to chum block the Nantuko husk. Hopefully no one mana removal spell end of turn here. Alright. An act of treason could still be pretty bad for us, but we'll see here. And an exquisite firecraft is probably just gonna kill the Nissa for damage to creature or player. Alright, at least we still got a plant token out of the deal. So I'll just take two here. And nothing else. Another hinterland logger. So let's start by attacking for two. And I think we do play the logger if our opponent has another twin bolt. We can save one of our creatures with the bellow. We could have played the logger first to tempt our opponent into using the twin bolt and then use a pump spell on the prowler to get in for more damage, but there is also ways that can go wrong. Cinder Baron tapped. Opponent up to 6 mana next turn at the very least. Galvanic Bombardment. It's gonna try and deal. 2 damage to the logger. So I think we try and save it with the bellow. And hope our opponent doesn't have a twin bolt in response. Alright, so far so good. So we could trade here if the opponent wants to attack with the husk. Which I think is a fine trade. Although with a Halpak Resurgence in hand it's better to have more wolves in play, of course. And the opponent does attack. So do we trade? We're currently ahead in the race, but the husk could be problematic if our opponent does have Act of Treason effects uh, later. So it's definitely close, but given that we're ahead on the race, I think I'm okay with taking two here and not trading. And nothing else from the opponent, alright. Forest is good, since now we're working our way up towards the Nissa's Judgment. So yeah, let's attack for 4 and probably just flash in the Halpak Resurgence before damage. And hope our opponent doesn't have Twin Bolt in response, but I feel like if they had another one they would have used it by now. And they could still have another removal spell, but hopefully only one. It's gonna be a murder on our Prowler. Alright, so they take three, one card left in hand. So we do have a shot at winning this game. If our opponent doesn't draw anything too great, but if they have something like a Planeswalker, then we could be in trouble. 
All right, Thermo Alchemist, that I can handle. And the Husk Attacks. I think we still keep the plant around, since if your opponent plays cards that make us sacrifice a creature, then having the plant around is pretty useful. Also, we can use Nissa's Judgment to put a counter on it and help us fight the Nantuko Husk. So, no reason to chump just yet. And nothing else from the opponent. So land means we could Nissa's Judgment. If our opponent has removal for the logger, that's pretty bad. And then the question is, what creature do we want to try and kill? I think it's probably still worth trying to kill the husk over the alchemist. So I think we just go for it here. So counter on both, and then try and kill the husk. All right, that worked. And now we can attack with both. And the opponent's gonna take four. No, they have a murder, so I don't really understand why they didn't use this in response to our Nissa's judgment, since they could have prevented us from killing their husk. But I guess I'll take it. So opponent gets to untap with an alchemist, up against our 1-2 plant token and halpack resurgence. They're tapping the Alchemist right now, so they probably have a way to untap it. Twin Bolt. It's gonna kill our plant, which is fine. Since it wasn't gonna deal damage with the Alchemist in play anyways. Alright, so at this point we just need to draw into some creatures. Hopefully some big ones. Alright, I guess I'll take it. Hinterland Logger. I guess our best draw maybe was something like a Duskwatch Recruiter, since we could have played it and activated it. Opponent pings us down to 12. As long as they don't find removal for the logger or a big blocker, we're fine here. Alright, looks like another instant or sorcery that they drew. Read the bones, not bad. So they lose two, but they do get to scry two and then draw two. So they probably find a way to deal with a uh, logger here. Okay, yep, we go down to ten. And another bombardment. All right. Prey upon doesn't do much without creatures in play. Down to nine we go. Opponent untaps. And all right, there's a dusk watch ruler, just what we wanted. So we get to play it, and I think we don't play upon here since removal in response would be a disaster, and we can still use the activated ability here. Opponent pings us down to 8. I Three cards in hand. So they probably have a way to deal with their recruiter. Hopefully they don't have a way to kill us this turn. But if they have maybe another Exquisite Firecraft, they get pretty close to killing us. Let's use the Recruiter end of turn. Find a Pacifist, which is pretty good. The Recruiter will transform since no spells were cast. And we find a Silver Fur Partisan, which we can play for just two mana here. Let's play that first, so if your opponent has other targeted removal, we get a wolf token. Play the pacifist. And I think we prey upon right now on the alchemist, using the lampold pacifist. Trigger the silver fur partisan. 
opponent puts us down to seven. We get a token. We get to attack for four. Opponent falls to three. And yeah, we are vulnerable to sweepers here if our opponent has a languish. But Alright, sweet. Doesn't look like our opponent has it. So they must have drawn a bunch of blanks. Recruiter transforms in response. We can use the activated ability once again. Find a logger. Pacifist also transforms. And now we get to attack with everyone. So our opponent made a pretty big mistake by not killing our creature in response to the Nissa's judgment there. But uh, yeah, on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which looks pretty good. A little light on creatures, but we do have a Nissa that provides some plant tokens. We have a decent curve and some powerful cards I think we'll keep. And hope our opponent can't answer our logger in time. Ideally, they don't have a turn to play, so we get to transform the logger right away. And they go with a turn one swamp. Let's go with a logger. And see if they have a two drop. Black green into death cap cultivator. All right, that's fine. So I'm fine trading both creatures here if our opponent wants to. But they probably don't. Yep, they take two. And we're just gonna play Nissa here, I think, over the Prowler since it's more mana efficient and puts pressure on the opponent to start attacking Nissa. And next turn we can potentially play the Prowler plus maybe another creature if we draw one, then minus Nissa, start applying a lot of pressure. Oath of Nissa from the opponents. Let's see what they can find. Found a Woodland Cemetery. All right, so it looks like they're just black green, no third color. And do they attack Nissa? They do. So we'll just jump with the plant here to preserve loyalty. All right, never mind. They are also playing white with the planes here. So they might have a Blast Alliance to force us to sacrifice an attacking creature. But that's probably still fine. What we could do is play a Pack Guardian on the opponent's turn. Try and transform the Hinterland Logger. Um, and then make a plant. Use a plant to also attack with to play around the Blast Alliance but that might be taking it a little too far. But I feel like our opponent is probably holding up Blast Alliance here because it seems unlikely that they didn't have another play that turn since they did have access to one more mana with the Cultivator. So yeah, maybe we do try and play around Blast Alliance here. Make a plant and say go. Keep up Bank Guardian, transform our logger. And if our opponent tries to attack Nissa, we can flash in a Pack Guardian to block the cultivator. Instead of having to jump with the plant. Opponent goes to combat. They do attack Nissa, so I think we flash in a Pack Guardian. See what happens. All right, so let's try and eat the Cultivator here. 
opponent could go Swamp Languish now, but that's a risk we have to take. And there it is. Alright, so... I guess it's a 2 for 2 trade, but we still have a Nissa in play, so it's not the end of the world. Um, now the question is, do we go 2 creatures and minus Nissa, or do we still keep plussing? I think plussing is fine here. Since that threatens the ultimate ability, opponent doesn't have any way to pressure Nissa at the moment. We can play two creatures, keep up Primal Bellow if our opponent has another Languish. Doesn't play around Planar Outburst, but can't play around everything. Evolving Wilds, so no Outburst this turn at the very least. And a Gideon which will probably make a token here, which is fine. Alright, so... We found another logger. So at this turn I think our plan is to try and kill Gideon and uh, put Nissa up to 7. Keep a blocker back for the knight token. The only question is, do we want to play out a second hinterland logger, or do we play around the sweeper effect? If our opponent trades here, then maybe committing another creature is fine. So let's start by attacking Gideon with both of these. Opponent probably blocks one of them. We use Primal Bellow on the other one to kill Gideon. And uh, go from there. Opponent blocks that one, we pump this one. So Gideon down, gonna make another plan token. And yeah, I think we do play the other Hinterland Logger for opponent as Declaration in Stone, so be it. If they have another Sweeper, so be it. Um, but yeah, having a Planeswalker on Ultimate is pretty nice. So if they have to use an Anguished on making, then I want to be able to pressure them. So land number six. Alright, so it's just an anguish in making, which does exile our Nissa, but now we do have two hinterland loggers in play that can attack. So here we wanna play around Bless the Lions, send in a plant token. And I guess if her opponent now has a follow-up sweeper, we're in trouble, but uh, yeah, not much we can do. So both werewolves transform. If they don't have a sweeper, there's a pretty good chance we get to win. Oblivion Sower, alright. They found three forests, that's a lot. And they get to follow up with the Sylvan Advocate, that's unfortunate. So if our opponent hadn't hit so many lands, we could have Nissa's Judgmented to kill the Oblivion Sower, attacked for lethal probably. But now our opponent got to play two spells, so they actually get to transform back the werewolves. So we did get pretty unlucky that the opponent hit three lands there. So what do we do now? We don't have any good attacks, we could try and take out the Sylvan Advocates, but we still can't attack into the Sower. So I think our best bet is to say go, play Pack Guardian, end of turn, uh, have our loggers transformed, and then try and use the Judgment on the following turn to kill the Sower. So let's say go. Both loggers transform. Opponent with a death cap cultivator, which probably has delirium. Yep, so it has death touch. Op 
opponent attacks with both. So this kind of tells me our opponent has the Blast Alliance to untap their creatures as well. I um, think we still jump with one plant. Then next turn we can Nissa's Judgment to kill one of the blockers. But yeah, the second plant here isn't going to do much for us. So let's block like this. Play Pack Guardian. Which resolves. So we're pretty sure our opponent has a Bless Alliance in hand here. Um, so they get to make a sacrifice an attacking creature, which is just going to be the plant, which is fine. They can gain four and they can untap their Oblivion Sower. If that's the case, so let's see, Nissa's Judgment is going to be able to kill one of the opponent's creatures. Could be either one of them. If we kill the Sylvan Advocate, opponent can still trade the Deathcap Cultivator with one of our creatures. And if they untap the Oblivion Sower, they also get to eat one of our creatures. While if we try and kill the Oblivion Sower, then we can simply trade with the Sylvan Advocate. So I think the plan is to try and kill the Sower. If our opponent has spot removal for one of our creatures, then we probably just lose, but so be it. So Nissa's Judgment, I think we put counters on the two 4-2s here. Although, if we do that, then we actually don't get to attack with the third 4-powered creature. So, hmm, maybe we do have to kill the Advocate. So let's put counters here, and I guess here, and then try and fight the Advocate. Go to combat, attack with everyone, and probably see a Blessed Alliance here. There we go. So the opponent will get to eat one of our creatures. They also will get to trade with one of them if they want to. So we're not in a great spot. Sacrifice a plant. Trade there, eat there. Still have a 4-3 left, opponent down to 7. Explosive vegetation is fine. So what's our best draw here? Probably just another primal bellow. Maybe Duskwatch Recruiter to start finding more creatures. Alright, that's a primal bellow. So... Yeah, I guess we play a land and attack. Hope our opponent doesn't have another Blast Alliance or removal spell. Alright, get to eat the Sower. And nothing from the opponents, just a land. Let's attack for four. Keep a land in hand for future Guardians and also to bluff. Opponent down to three, so we might still be able to get there if our opponent blanks on a draw step. Alright, sweet. Did not imagine we were going to win this game, but somehow we got there. Attack for four. Alright, sweet. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day.